Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. This will be part two on how to make a flat vinyl repair. Given any repair scenario, the technician will have to pause and try to decide what's the best approach. As a matter of fact, this would be a good time to interject that anything you see me do on this channel doesn't mean that that's the final answer. It does not in any way mean that that's the only approach or the only way to fix something. Any experienced tech will tell you that for any given damage, they have to pause for a moment and think, what would be the best in this situation? And so the technician draws upon a big bag of tricks uh, in order to accomplish the end result. So we're going to show today just uh, one alternative which is tried and true from the history of vinyl repairing. And uh, we think that this will be uh, beneficial for you too in trying to attain, you know, that flat repair. So without further ado, let's get to work. This damage is very similar to that that we had in our part one video. As a matter of fact, it turned out just by sheer coincidence, it's the exact same model of vehicle. Do you believe in coincidence? Ha, me too. So we're not going to review everything in detail as we did in part one. As you know, in part one, we use the iron to soften and to push down flat these brittle edges of the repair, which we've done here so far. Then for this method, we're going to put one layer of vinyl repair compound in place, and we're going to cure that using the heat gun. We didn't show putting the chill bar directly on the repair material last time, so we're going to show it here and this will ensure that you get a flat surface. However, if you'll notice, it makes a little bit of an imprint in the vinyl on the ends, but don't worry, that's just temporary. That's gonna bleed right back out. So what we do here is we've cut a piece of the reinforcing mesh and we're embedding that into a layer of vinyl repair compound and then spreading a layer of the compound over top. That way we've sandwiched that reinforcing mesh right in between. Now, when we heat it, it won't burn the mesh. And that little spot happens to be some black compound off the pellet knife. And this time, if you'll notice, we're using the grain pad below the chill bar. That way, we're not going to leave any lines either. And as you notice, I'm addressing each half of the repair at a time so that I can flatten each end while it's hot. We're going to put one more layer to smooth out our edges. Of course, we've tried to embed the reinforcing mesh right into the vinyl. And I'll clean out that stitch line before we cure it. And now we'll clean the plasticizer and get ready for a little bit of guide coat. So I grabbed the closest color that was left over. It may darken some as it dries, but it's a little light here still. So at least uh, with the guide coat, you get a chance to see what the color is going to dry to. And then while you're doing the repairing, you can be thinking about how to adjust your color. So the guide coat shows me really well all the little imperfections that need to be addressed.
I've also selected a grain pad that's a little finer and putting that underneath the pad I had initially. There is a pinhole that was there the whole time, but I never saw it till just now. Quite typically those ends need to be finessed a bit and will spread the heat widely from the end over to the good vinyl and will make a nice grain transition. Prepping now by cleaning the plasticizer off, putting my adjusted color on the whole area. It looks light going on, but as you know, these polymers dry darker. So we never make our final decision until it's dry. And then as usual, we're putting a light spray texture blend at low pressure in order to pull everything together. Up to pressure for the final fine atomization. This will be our finished color coat. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. And we're out of there. You may face some larger damages that would better be reupholstered. But nonetheless, sometimes we're forced into repairing something just to give an older vehicle some curb appeal. In that case, it's good to use a larger iron. You can always say it doesn't look too bad from four feet away. In this picture, you can see that the texture left by the graining paper is not exact. It is, however, the closest one we had. And it will be sufficient underneath our spray grain, which will blend everything out. So, as always, I hope there was something here that you could benefit from. And I do appreciate your input as we put together this reference journal for the mobile tech. Please subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified of any future uploads.